When a picture of a small orange octopus hit the front page of Reddit in 2012, the top comment asked, why the fuck doesn't he have a top hat? Another user replied with an edited version of the original image, and voila, the octopus wore a formal black top hat angled ever so slightly. You've probably come across this caricature before, a cartoon octopus with a top hat and other dandy accoutrements. If you Google octopus top hat, you'll find him on clothing, stationery, coffee mugs, tote bags, pillows, and human flesh. But there's one thing you can't find on Google. Why? To find out, we called Kurt Gray, who, quote, investigates the mysterious inner lives of animals, machines, and human beings. They are smart, right? Like, we know this objectively. They're smarter than other animals. Also, they don't have bodies. You can't put pants on an octopus. You know, all you've got is really their head. And so you might as well put a hat on it. And to this day, that image haunts our collective conscious, like when one of the hosts of Game Grumps, a popular web series, told his 3 million subscribers what was in his recent search history. Octopus top hat. <laughs> that coincided with a massive spike in related search queries that week. The details of this caricature have been fine-tuned, replicated, and circulated over the internet. On YouTube, there's tutorials for how to sketch one or make one out of felt. You can even buy a pre-made plushie on Etsy or a stamp, or even tape. Once you start looking for fancy octopuses, you see them everywhere, from steampunk drawings to hip hop fan art. So many watches, I need eight arms. But before the octopus and a top hat invaded the internet, he was big on TV. There was Oswald on Nick Jr., voiced by Fred Savage. Oswald. Dan Yaccarino, the show's creator, said he gave Oswald a bowler hat to make him look extra courteous because octopuses, quote, seem like fairly genteel creatures. And before that, there was Octi on the Powerpuff Girls. Octi? I don't know why I felt the need to put a top hat on Octi, other than it just felt right, Craig McCracken, the creator of the Powerpuff Girls, said via email. Looking back, McCracken said that Octi's design could have been subconsciously influenced by Mr. Peanut, since, quote, both he and Octi have that bulbous head and skinny neck. That would bring us back to 1916, when Planters chose the mascot after holding a design contest. Planters got something iconic, a peanut with a cane and a monocle and a top hat. Antonio Gentile, the schoolboy from Suffolk, Virginia who drew it, got five bucks. But this quasi-meme is way older than Planters and Little Antonio. A Harper's Weekly cover from 1900 featured three octopuses and top hats. That's presidential nominee William Jennings Bryan they're wrapping their gentlemanly tentacles around. And John Tenniel, who illustrated Alice in Wonderland, once portrayed William Gladstone wielding a knife against a top-hatted octopus in 1881. But one of the most famous and persistent examples is the devil fish in Egyptian waters, which used the far-reaching tentacles of the octopus as a metaphor for British imperialism. And just like the all-consuming influence and spread of British imperialism, the fancy octopus continues to seep into every aspect of modern human culture. Books, magazines, television, the internet. A post on Tumblr summed it up best. All of human history has led us to the moment that we developed the technology to digitally add a top hat to a photo of an adorable miniature octopus. There is no escaping the fancy octopus. It is inherent in us all. <laughs>